Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So, as I've been predicting, the charts are heading into the lull around the holiday season. And I mean that more than most weeks, because I don't think I've seen the Hot 100 this static in months, with only a pretty sparse crop of new arrivals to bring any real disruption, and even then, not that much. Hopefully, this means I'll be able to keep the episode short and get to work on my last few reviews before a year-end list, but hey, you never know, right? Okay, whatever. The Top 10, where for another week we've got Perfect by Ed Sheeran featuring Beyonce at number one. And really, that should be no surprise to anybody. With Ed Sheeran debuting yet another video for it on YouTube, and it already being a sales and radio darling. Now, I do have to wonder whether or not it will suffer from overexposure, especially on YouTube. Being boring and saccharine might work for the holiday season, but will it last beyond that? Certainly holding up over Rockstar by Post Malone featuring 21 Savage at number two. As despite ruling streaming, it seemed to hit a peak on the radio, and still remains only second best on sales. I mean, compare this to Havana by Camila Cabello featuring Young Thug at number three. Yeah, not quite as strong on streaming, but YouTube's better, sales are up, and it is consistently ruling the radio even as Ed Sheeran is racing to catch up. Now, all this thankfully places Gucci Gang by a little pump at a disadvantage at number four. Yes, it's YouTube will never die, and it had a good sales week, but with no significant radio, it's not really going to get any higher here. Then we got Thunder by Imagine Dragons at number five, which despite strong sales is mercifully taking some hits on the radio. I can see this fading in the face of larger competition, which might just happen with our first new top 10 entry at number 6, Motorsport by Migos, Nicki Minaj, and Cardi B. Now I'm confident in saying this is only about half of a good song and the sales aren't really what they need to be to get any higher, but thanks to the video, climbing streaming, and some slow radio gains, this might actually have a little bit of staying power, especially if the video doesn't fade that quickly. Put itself above Too Good a Goodbyes by Sam Smith down to number 7, but I might have expected this dip this week anyway, because even as radio somewhat stabilized, its streaming and sales are not pulling it over. It's holding up over Bad at Love by Halsey at number 8, which is surging on the radio, but not quite enough to hold up over some weak streaming and sales declining this week. And now we have our second new entry to the top 10, and one that I never expected would ever get this high, All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey at number 9. Now here's a bit of history for you. For songs to chart on the Billboard Hot 100 back in 1994, when this song was first released, they had to be released commercially as a unique single. And thus, this never charted until after that rule lapsed years later, I think in 1998. And yet, even still, it would have a hard time getting higher thanks to the recurrent rule placed on sales, which Billboard removed in 2012, which has allowed the song to chart higher and higher every single year. And as such, Thanks to those sales, the streaming, and YouTube, it is back, breaking the top 10 for the first time ever, overtaking No Limit by g Easy featuring ASAP Rocky and Cardi B down to number 10. Now, this will rebound next week. Between the album dropping and that video, it's just fine. But it did stagger a little bit in the sales and the radio, which might be a little bit worrisome. And on that note, our losers and dropouts, and wow, not a lot here at all. Again, it seems like we're cleaning away the junk of 2017, with dropouts for Love So Soft by Kelly Clarkson, The Race by Tay K, and Congratulations by Post Malone featuring Quavo. And really, it seems like a similar case for our losers. Jocelyn Flores by XXXTentacion finally takes a hit down to 98. Tell Me You Love Me by Demi Lovato stumbles after the video down to 81. And in the biggest surprise for me, Endgame by Taylor Swift featuring Ed Sheeran and Future fell down to 49. I mean, it's not really a good song, but you would think all that star power, especially with Ed Sheeran's name, would have pushed this up higher on the charts. Now granted, when you take a look at our gains, I think I'd rather take Taylor Swift over convicted sex offender 6 9 taking Coda up to 50 off its debut last week, which is sharing awkward space with It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year by Andy Williams up to 35. But really, that's all the gains we have. We actually have more returning entries this time, with Legends by Kelsey Ballerini making a welcome return to 99, along with No Smoke by Young Boy Never Broke Again, a song I will never remember minutes after hearing it, and Last Christmas 
by Wham! back at 44. I was wondering when this is going to come back for the Christmas season. Nice to hear it. What caught a lot more of my interest was the return for Pull Up and Wreck by Big Sean, Metro Boomin, featuring 21 Savage at 80. Not because the song is remotely good, but because I was genuinely surprised that anything from Double or Nothing would chart. And this week, it proved me wrong in multiple ways, not just the song. But before we directly address that, let's start off with the rest of our new arrivals. Beginning off with number 86, Untouchable by Eminem. Okay, look, I'm not sure how many of the new Eminem songs are going to cross over to the Hot 100. This one blew up on YouTube, which is likely why it landed where it is. And after the review I just gave Revival, it almost feels like kicking a guy when he's down, especially when this is arguably the most political that he gets on the album. But man alive, this is a really hard song for me to like. Six minutes of surface level racial politics with a badly integrated Cheech and Chong sample that's played for profits of rage quality rap rock. And while this might play as a mind blowing to an audience, who doesn't engage with more conscious hip-hop, for those of us who do, it can feel shockingly trite. You would expect more from M. Yeah, you know what? Hiring more black cops would probably help. But police solidarity and ignoring the actions of bad cops is a much thornier issue. And just sending the black cops into black neighborhoods doesn't seem like the right approach when community outreach and engagement and dealing with systemic poverty is a much more appropriate response. And that's not even getting into the drug issues. And yeah, Eminem kind of gets there in some of the peripheral references and I appreciate how he takes time to castigate self-serving Republican individualism with a really apt Captain America reference and targeting blind patriotism over dealing with real problems. But here's my issue. If you note how Eminem used the pronoun we after that beat switch, he's speaking from the perspective of Black America. So why the hell did he not just bring on a rapper of color to actually deliver this verse? Again, it's indicative of the issue of this album, where M wants to make a political statement, but he's trying to become the standard bearer of the issue, which really doesn't help elevate the voices that should be heard on this topic. And when you combine it with a lot of choppy flows and a six minute runtime that really gets tedious, yeah, it's passable, I guess, but only barely. Number 82, Danger by Migos and Marshmello. Believe her, believe her. I can take out all the evil, empowerment to all my people. I can prove to you I'm a leader. Run through the money, no keys. Forgive me, cause my life is legal. You know, I've been on the fence with Marshmallow thus far with his crossover singles on the Hot 100. I think he's got some good melodic instincts as a producer. I don't think he's bad, but it's hard not to feel like some of his drops are a bit one-dimensional, typically a flattened bassy synth playing off of a couple notes. So can he do more opposite Migos of a song that's featured on the Bright soundtrack, the second one we've seen thus far? Well, honestly, it's actually pretty decent, minus the expected drop, which doesn't happen. Marshmallow takes his oily synths and trap skitters and pairs it with a bombastic synth horn driven chorus with big drums it's a pretty solid fit for Offset and Takeoff, delivering more focused bars that actually seem to capture the hard-bitten criminal and enforcer elements that fill up the movie. Even though that bipolar line from Offset, that was really in poor taste. Dude, you're better than that. Now, if I were to pinpoint a weakness beyond that line on the song, it's probably Quavo on the hook. The tempo slows, his flow is more abortive, the auto-tune is of course there. I'm not sure he's got the intensity to really match the more bombastic production, as well as he thinks that he does. But still, for a Migo song, certainly stands out as different, not quite as one-dimensional as cuts on culture, so yeah, I can respect this. Decent track. Number 77, My Dog by Lil Baby. Me and my dog, we get them two in a row. They just keep on calling. She says she ready to pull up. As soon as I get there, I'ma be on the floor now. I'm on my way, I'm going fast. I'm coming home and get you home. I'm on my way, I'm going fast. Okay, another week, another trap rapper with a career mostly dependent on autotune. But frankly, I'm actually a little bit surprised we haven't seen a little baby song on the charts before now. He's a friend of Young Thug who only started rapping this year right after he got out of jail. But he's been churning out mixtapes and racking up some big cosigns. And yet with this song, 
Okay, look, he sounds like a more subdued and a less interesting young thug with content that doesn't rise above the generic flexing and talking about putting girls in a full Nelson as they try to rip off his pants. And when you factor in how many rhymes that he flubs with impunity, I fail to see why on earth I should give a damn about this guy beyond some decent rattling tones and pianos behind the trap rumble. And thus, in the end, like so many of these songs and really so many of these artists, I'm gonna forget this exists in a week or a day. Let's just move on. Number 72, Dark Knight Dumbo by Trippy Red featuring Travis Scott. Coming in, coming in. Put up in a dry time, she dropped it. first saw the title of the song, I thought it might actually be a diss track. I know that Trippy Red has had beef with 6 9 and while I wasn't really crazy about Trippy Red on that song he did with Tentacion, the fact that he got a Travis Scott co-sign was kind of encouraging for his first crossover, right? Well, wrong, because my god, this is a mess of a song. Let's deal with the production first. I might not mind the buzzed out bass, but when you tack on a sandy trap skitter and a gleaming melody that feels clumsily shoved in that's somehow louder than Trippy Red's vocals, you got a big problem, especially when it doesn't drown out Travis Scott for some bizarre reason. Now granted, if there's a song that showcases how Red might not really be ready for prime time, it's this. Not only are his nasal howls barely salvageable, even with autotune, especially with how his backing vocals are dumped in often louder than his main bars, his flow is so slapdash and clumsy that the rhymes barely hold up outside of the sloppy mixing. And really, it's not like his content is remotely interesting either, it's a little bit more colorful, but that's not saying much. And given that most of the melody is interpolated from his song with Tentacion and Travis Scott really isn't bringing top shelf material here, even though he does kind of save the song, yeah, can't really endorse it. It's not terrible, but it is a mess. Number 67, Go Legend by Big Sean and Metro Boomin featuring Travis Scott. not sure I was expecting on this because when Double or Nothing dropped, the biggest criticisms, they weren't for Metro Boomin, but Big Sean dropping some of his corniest bars yet. And I'm just sitting back here with a bemused, completely unsurprised expression. Glad that you're all catching up on this. It's been a couple of years. And Go Legend, it had its work cut out for it, given that it's melodic samples from a pretty recognizable Diana Ross track. Even if you tack on slightly darker synths and a trap beat, it's hard to make that not sound kind of schmaltzy and cheesy. It's honestly a little ridiculous. And to add to all that, you got Travis Scott delivering one of his most monotonous and repetitive hooks yet, and Big Sean rapping about being friends with John Legend after rhyming Legend with itself four times. Shame you picked up none of his class as a few bars later you talk about socking a girl out of her socks, and that he does it all for his dogs now that he's husky, as he gets high watching Rick and Morty. Okay, that last line might be the most realistic thing that Big Sean has ever rapped about, but at the same time, by the Nine Hells, Big Sean is nowhere near as imposing or legendary as he thinks he is. Not exactly saying this is terrible, the fact that Metro Boomin managed to make this sample somewhat palatable at all, that's a testament to his skill as a producer, but no way I can hell I can take this seriously. This is mediocre at best and really kind of bad in a not a good way. And finally, number 61, Never Be the Same by Camila Cabez. So look, for as much as I was not a fan of Camila Cabello in Fifth Harmony, she's been doing a lot to redeem herself going solo. I didn't mind crying in the club, and while OMG didn't really work, Havana was one of those songs I predicted was a bona fide hit the first time I heard it, and it's good enough to actually deserve that hit status. It's in the top five right now, and I have no problem with that. So could she follow it up with it on her own? Honestly, I'm not convinced, and it's sadly primarily driven off of Camila as a singer. I'm sorry, but whenever she goes up for those breathy high notes where she falls flat more often than she should, 
but it can't help but highlight how limited she is, even as a pop singer. It doesn't help that the percussion heavy mix barely has any consistent melody in order to back her up or all that much unique texture, or that the lyrics feel pretty damn thin in describing how this relationship has utterly consumed all of her attention. But really, of the songs she's released thus far in preparation for the debut that have charted on the Hot 100, this is probably the least interesting. Not terrible, but it is pretty forgettable. So yeah, the quality definitely took a step down after last week, but it's less that anything here is outright terrible and more that there's a lot of mediocrity. The best of the week, I'm giving this to Migos and Marshmallow with Danger. Not a lot to it, and there were a couple problematic elements, but it had the most that worked. And with the worst, you know what, I'm tempted to give it to Trippy Red, but that ridiculous sample and some of the asinine bars and how Big Sean is taking this so damn seriously, it's Go Legend. Big Sean, Metro Boomin, and Travis Scott, that's the worst for me. At least the foundation of Dark Knight Dumbo was kind of salvageable, even if that song was effectively saved by Travis Scott. Okay, whatever. Next week's probably the one with a lot of mediocre Eminem or g Easy, unless the holiday season deflates it all. But you never know, NERD might show up. Lemon's been doing better than you would expect, but okay, we'll see. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Balls, and I'll 